This time I'm bringing you Alex's gaming tips on a very specific game that you can do a lot of stuff with. Now, Monopoly is one of those games that I could talk about for hours, but the most important thing is that if those things that I'm gonna tell you today don't work, just accuse other people of cheating. You know, it, that that's always all you get out of that situation. Just don't acknowledge them winning. Don't do that. Okay, I divided this video into two parts, right? The legal stuff you can do and the illegal stuff you can do because I wanted to show you both tricks and like methods to win games but also how to cheat the system a little bit because I said when I started the series that I was gonna do any means possible for you to win these games and I'm gonna start off with the legal part. The first thing that you wanna absolutely do is to know your math. The math is one of the most important aspects of the game of Monopoly. The probabilities of the property visits especially. You wanna know what properties are visited the most because that's the ones you want to buy for yourself so other people can go there a lot pay a lot of money the top 10 most visited properties in order illinois avenue bno railroad new york avenue reading railroad tennessee avenue pennsylvania railroad st james place waterworks kentucky avenue and indiana avenue now if you have a look at the board that tells us one thing right not one of those is on the final lane the fourth lane the um, last of the board those are also the most expensive ones, by the way. You want to stay away from those in the early to mid game. Because those are not going to turn out the profit that you want. You want to spam inexpensive and effective squares and properties. I have other people get there a lot and pay a lot of money out of those. Uh, next thing you want to want to look at is the probability of dice rolling. Okay, Monopoly is played with two dice and you're rolling both at the same time. Now, there's a 40% chance of getting one of the numbers 6, 7 or 8 with that. Because the dice overlap, and that's how that works. Okay, so 40% chance that people will roll 6, 7, or 8. Well, for example, numbers like 2 or 12 are really unlikely. Number 1, very unlikely. Very unlikely, okay? Uh, even numbers, and that's, and that's the next thing, uh, after you're in a jail. Because in the jail, you need to roll uh, doubles to escape or pay a fine. But even numbers like that immediately follow the jail are squares that are visited disproportionately often because people need to escape from the jail and they roll the dice three times. Now from certain squares like the jail or go, which is inevitably squares that people will be forced to go to, you especially want to take a look at uh, the distance, the 6 to 6 to 8, and the even numbers if you're considering the jail. That for example tells us that Tennessee Avenue, which is 8 squares from jail, is probably the best the best property in the game. It's 8 squares from jail, it's an even number, you can roll it with doubles. It's on the second lane, it's toward the end of the lane, which is also good, and it's one of the most visited ones. It was, uh, along with this St. James Place, it was uh, in the top 10 most visited properties, so that's probably my favorite property in the game, to be honest. Okay, second tip, also legal. Uh, do not get into depth, and avoid uh, taking on mortgages. Because that is over the long run going to cost you more than it will give you. You want all your properties to be active and harvesting money for yourself. And if you go into depth, you're really running the risk of taking one misstep and you're pretty much out of the game. You're you lost. So you do not want to do that. You do not want to spend big bucks on hotels too early. That's the whole putting all your eggs in one basket thing that doesn't work out in Monopoly. And number three and the last legal tip is use the jail, I mentioned it before, in a strategic way. Okay? If you're in jail, and you've got a specific square where you want to go, like right in front of the jail, pay the fine if you happen to roll that number. If you happen, if you, if you really wanted to go to, say, Tennessee Avenue, and you're, and you're rolling an 8, but it's a 5 and a 3, pay the $50 fine and go there if you want to buy it. If that, if that, that's, that's value. In my opinion, if you go to jail, you pay the fine if you can buy, if you can buy Tennessee Avenue, because that, that's value. And that's going to pay off in the long run, so you want to use the jail strategically. Now that's uh, all I had to say for the legal part of winning at Monopoly, now the illegal part, which is also the fun part. If you're setting up the board, okay, that's that's a great way. You can tell people like, oh, don't worry, I'm setting up the board, just come over, I have everything set up. If you set up the board before other people arrive, just give yourself a, a bit of extra money. Okay, so from the $20 bill down, I believe the official rules say you get six bills each. So no one will notice if you give yourself seven. It's not huge, but it's a bit of an advantage. Now you don't want to give yourself a, a third five hundred dollar bill because people will notice that when it's when there's one more on that stack because it's only three. But with six or seven, people won't notice that that easily. Now, 
Another one, and this is really dependent on the type of players that you play. If you know who you're playing and you know you can pull this off, you get the cards uh, with events on it, just read them out incorrectly. If, you, if you're drawing a bad card for yourself, just re just say the text that says states on a card that you want. If you know that people are not gonna check what it is, just pick up cards. Establish the fact that you're the one to always pick up cards and read them out and read out whatever you feel like it. But for that, of course, you need to study the cards. You need to look at the decks of cards and you need to study the wording. So you know you need to know exactly what those cards say. And if you memorize that, you could just pull that off on people. I've pulled that off on people before. If they don't check the card, you just read it out. Put it underneath the stack, and they and they believe it. I mean, it's their bad for believing it. Third option is dice manipulation. Okay, rolling two dice and controlling the outcome is really hard. Okay, good street hustlers can do it. Most people can't even do it with one die. Not not very reliable at least. So I'll leave that out because you that takes a lot of practice. So you're not gonna do it, and it gets suspicious if you're gonna roll two dice and roll them like one by one every single time so that's you don't want to do that but for example right if you say if you can manipulate the dice while other people are looking you're rolling them you really quickly in your head are calculating oh shit I need to go there I don't want to go there. there's a whole tail on there you you for example you re-roll one or you just turn it around flip it to another side if people are not paying attention now pro tip if you're playing one person okay you're playing one-on-one -on -one, roll the dice while the other person is still finishing their move while they're still moving paying stuff collecting money reading a card anything roll the dice really quickly look oh I get I, I'm going there pick the dice up again and move okay you don't have if they because if they don't see the dice they can't tell what you rolled but you're gonna move and pick the dice up so they can't control it so they can't check did he really roll that and they will have to trust you that's all they can do for that to work you need to study the board and you need to learn the distances between all the squares. For example, from one railroad to the other railroad, it's 10 squares. From one corner to the other corner, it's 10 squares. And so you need to know exactly when you're, like, you're sitting, say you're sitting on go, roll a 10, okay, I'm visiting jail. You know exactly where you're going when you roll the dice, and you and you can't count squares. That's, that's the uh, time advantage that you need in order to manipulate people when they're not paying attention to what you're rolling. So you can, oh, I'm... I see with that with that roll, I'm going to some place I don't want to go. I'm picking up the dice before the other people can look at what I actually rolled. I'm moving a squ like like one 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 square further, which is where I want to go. For example, something like that. Here's another thing: if you're taking breaks in between games or people are busy or whatever, if you can get a hand into the bank sitting right next to you and grab some money out of there, you got you got a big stack. People will notice if there's a few more bills on there. Do it. Just, just grab. If you can, if you can get a hand on the bank and people won't notice, just do it. That's that's the easiest thing, and that's probably what people consider cheating. Like that's what people think of when they think about cheating at Monopoly. Usually, you don't have to resort to that, but hey, why not? And the last thing I wanted to talk about is, uh, I'm not sure if this counts as illegal or legal because it's, I guess it's technically not not cool to do that, but it's also pretty neat. So if you can pull it off, do it. You may have heard of the magician's force before, and you can pull that off in Monopoly or a similar variant of that on the first roll. So this is the thing with you, right? You just want to start the game. You grab the dice and you roll them, and you take a look at where at where you're going, right? You go into to a good square. You 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 gonna you gonna go there, right? You, for example, you're rolling a five uh, or a six. Yeah, I'm I'm going there. Seven, cool. Like a, a four? You don't want to go there, obviously. So what you do is, if you roll a five, you go there, you buy the railroad, you're happy. If you roll a four, you're gonna hand the other person the dice and be like, okay, whoever rolls the highest score can start, basically. You know, that's when some sometimes you play games where it's the person who will roll the higher score with the first roll of the dice will start, so it'll roll the actual official first turn. So that's what you do, just roll. Oh, it's a four. Okay, here's your dice. No, you roll. If you roll higher, you start. So that's just avoiding taking a bad turn in the beginning. At least pulling it out by one, giving yourself one more chance. If you want to go that route, I've never done it, but I, I think that's a cool trick, so why not use it? Those were the tips that I wanted to present to you. Now, now you do need to remember, though, the most effective thing that you can do if none of this stuff works is just toss the board around the room. Make sure that to spread the pieces through all the several rooms in your house so it takes a long time to clean it up and be really mad on people. Uh, you need to protest or win at all costs and insist on running it back until they do and you will not acknowledge the fact that they won the game. That's, that's always what works and that's always the contingency plan that you need to have in case people call you cheating 
or in case your math doesn't work out or you just just get unlucky and that's also what you need to remember uh, it's a game based like like poker i like comparing it to poker because it's skill game but it also takes luck because there's dice rolling involved and any game where there's rolling of the dice involved it takes luck so that's all i wanted to present to you today uh, I'm actually that's a fact that's a fact of the week for you here. I'm in JJ's room, but JJ's not allowed to talk throughout the entire video. That's it.